Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome to Sable. Uh, among the kinds of people whose opinions I listen to about video games, this thing has been getting basically exclusively uh, positive buzz, and I've been looking for an opportunity to get it into the schedule since it came out. And he here we are. Here is that opportunity. So it looks like a really, uh, a really chill, very exploration-focused game. And if you're thinking, you know, SB, you've been playing a lot of low energy chilled out stuff lately i'm in the mood for something else just just come back tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna be getting into some stuff that definitely has a different vibe uh but today sable i'm really i'm really looking forward to this i hope that y'all will will come along on this journey with me hey right, we should probably look here uh mostly what i'm looking for is subtitles are there no subtitle settings? Okay. Maybe there's no need. No, wait, do the thing. There we go. Only took me two tries to start a new game. Good omens for the future. So as you can tell from the fact that I didn't know whether there would be subtitle settings, I don't know a huge amount <laughs> about what actually happens in the game. I've seen a couple of, of short bits of gameplay. Yeah, and they look like this. So this is one of the things that I have seen that I think is really cool. I, I really dig this like very low frame rate protagonist. And in fact, I think the character is 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 like operating at a lower frame rate than the rest of the world, which gives the game a very unique vibe. Can we can we go smooch the giant face? It very clearly has a vertical line running down the center of it. It'd be great if we could just open this. Nope. Okay. Let's see about going out here, then. Okay, jumping, climbing, stamina, obviously, uh, all brand new ideas, never been in a video game before. Can I, like, oh, my jumping precision? Could use a little bit of work. Just kind of curious, like, to what degree do we catch and grab, or catch and like mantle and stuff? Okay, she seems to be pretty agile. Let's see what's up there. So yeah, we're kind of in for a lot of this, I think. A lot of a lot of big sweeping vistas, a lot of exploring ruins, uh, a lot of not falling to my death. There we go. Look at the grace. Those birds have a way higher frame rate than I do. Okay, I have no idea if this is a fall damage game or not, so I guess that's something we'll discover as we go. Game 
right out of the gate, dropping the double whilst on you. I can feel Jotty smiling behind her mask, just as I know she can feel the teeth-bearing little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous, and she's softly, sweetly amused. In her eyes, I probably have very little to worry about. You know you have nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? Uh, listen, that advice never helps. In, ca in case you are in, in your life or dealing with a person who uh, worries or perhaps has some kind of serious anxiety disorder, pointing out that it's illogical for them to worry. It's not, not super useful. They already know that, trust me. And yet, I shrug, but any attempts to act casual are fruitless. The movement is jerky, and I don't think I've ever been more aware of my little shoulders. She laughs. I mean it, but I do know how you are. You're going to be nervous until you've started, and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put you on the seat, you were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping onto me. I feel the memory in my fingers. But then I promised you it was going to be alright. I told you how much I had loved riding my bike as a young woman, and how wonderful the wind felt through fabric. And suddenly there you were. You sat down, you leaned forward and put those little grasping claws on the handles, and you were off. And I remember thinking, just watching you tear over the sand, look at her. She can do whatever she wants. Jetty reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. And you can, Sable. I take a breath. Um, I literally don't know where to start because I don't know what we're talking about. Jotty's story warms me, but I feel too overwhelmed to let it settle. I tell her with a sigh that I don't know where to begin. She chuckles. Well, I can help with that. You'll need to talk to Halal and Driss. Driss should already have made the arrangements for your bike, and Halal will share something. Uh, something, let's say, as useful as it is fun, hmm? I think I might suspect what Jotty's saying, but I stay quiet. And after that, I suppose we'll see you off. What if I choose the wrong path? <laughs> there are no wrong paths, Sable. Or right ones. I'll be glad if you choose to stay with the Abexi, but truth be told, I'll be glad no matter what, so long as you're happy. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. Now, go speak with Halal. I'll be there to see you off. And speak to Driss as well. I've told him to arrange your bike with Cizo, but you know how he is. And I have something to give you. A compass to help you on your journey. It's the same one I used on my uh, uh, gliding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there. Perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Go on, go on, it's nearly time. Okay. Hold Q for, for mission, uh, mission objective markers. Got it. Uh, that's pretty cool. As I approach Halal, they give an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verve and vigor, and on a day like this I'm ready to match it. With a touch of nerves, for balance. Sable, take this! Halal hands me a small round stone. As it nestles into my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands, but emanating from within. I run my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. Uh, what is, what is this? I try to sound less confused than I am, but ask Halal what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? 
I tell Halal that I feel um, sort of sort of a fuzziness. I think is how it was described. Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gliding stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now it's empty, or dormant, and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. <laughs> Take it to the temple ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. Halal claps their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. You come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. As I'm about to leave, Halal stops me. Oh, you haven't gotten your bike yet, have you? It's a bit of a trek to the temple, so go see Driss. He was meant to get that ready for you, yes? I remember Jotty's words now, and tell Halal I'll go see Driss. I was gonna, you were just closer. Is there anything I can steal in your tent? No. Okay, I was just seeing if we had any more, uh, any more conversation... The, um, forgive me, the mouse sensitivity could be a little bit higher. It is taking me more than a full camera movement to like turn, or more than a full like mouse across my pad movement to turn 90 degrees, and that's not going to work. Okay, it seems like maybe there's no fall damage. I, I would have expected that to be a problem. Though I've told myself not to be too eager, it's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but now I strongly suspect that's because he's been working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore or will I get used to it? Driss turns with a bit of a start. Sable, uh, uh hello. Uh, let's be polite first, especially since we expect it to be receiving a gift here. I ask Driss how he is. I'm well. I let it hang there a moment. Uh, but I can't do it. I'm too keen and the words spill out. I ask Driss if he might sort of possibly maybe have a bike for me. Your bike! He yells it like it's an idea he's just had. Your bike, yes, of course, yes, your bike, that, that I was meant to, um, that I prepared for you, because today is your... He, yeah, like, he seems to have clearly forgotten. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let him swig a little bit here. Uh, yeah, my gliding, yes. Driss nods along with me. Yes, of course, right, yes, yes, I, I, I do have that. My blood runs cold. Has he forgotten? By which I mean, I, I arranged it for you. In a, well, it's, it's sort of a tutorial for you. A tutorial. Yes, exactly. A, a learning experience. You see, Sable, before one can own their own bike, they must prove that they can ride a bike by take, uh, taking a test ride on a different bike. I think about it and find I've never heard of that part of the gliding, but Driss does seem earnest. Sort of. So, instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try th this bike as, as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter at his side. It's quite old and a little shabby. A tester, if ever I've seen one. Uh, okay. What's the bike's name? Driss seems scandalized. Well, that's a bit personal, don't you think? Just sand cutter will do for now. Youngsters these days, always asking... Questions. Now, ride the bike through the ring and back. And here's some advice for you, my young glider. Don't fall off. Solid, good tech. When you're not riding it, the bike appears as a blue icon on the compass. Okay. How do how does one drive bike? Ooh, strafe controls are very responsive. Oh I see, it's a mode switch, not a okay. Uh, this is as fast as it goes, by the way, just in case you were curious. I 
I should speak to Driss, but first I'm going to intentionally crash this bike into a wall. Okay. <laughs> to see what happens, the answer is nothing. Now what's up now, Driss? I went through two rings. Now you owe me two bikes. Hi. Okay, apparently I'm not supposed to... Let me just... Let me just back this thing up a little bit. There we go. I return to Driss, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard, despite knowing that I was coming, especially since this damn tester bike is so loud. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide ride? Any strange rattles? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? Uh, what do you mean, fires? Well, surely you'd notice if you were on fire, even a little bit. Sorry, was that a possibility? Well, I mean, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Driss, is this bike dangerous? I just, <laughs> would you please just come out and... Well, he doesn't finish. Uh, have you already been by Halal? Uh, yes. All right, I guess, I guess it's time to just put it to him. Driss, am I not getting a bike... Well, you're getting the use of this sand cutter. That's something, eh? You, you can borrow it to run your little errands. My little errands? And Hilal's got something to show you, too. Help you out with that with more of that uh, mobility you're after. With my confidence in this exercise only lightly tarnished, I thank Driss very much for his help and his bike, and depart for Halal. Well, I mean, no, I did that already. I mean, we know what Hilal wants us to do, right? Can I... I can, in fact, compass while on the bike. Ooh, okay, it's a little weird to... Okay. <clears throat> Should I go speak to Halal again? He was probably just saying that because he doesn't know whether I have, right? Okay, we're just going to drive around a little bit. This thing is very... They've done a great job of making it just, like, feel and look rickety. There's a lot of bob that you're really, <laughs> you're not, not looking for in a vehicle of this type. Not even a little bit of turbo. All right, the ruins were over this way, right? I do not have a marker for them. I mean, that's got to be them, right? Probably. Oh, what on earth happened there? No idea. <laughs> yep, good work. I was trying to let's just let's just get out of the bike. I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt myself. Okay. Uh can I not quite. What about with the help of this thing? Well, yes, if I had remembered to hit jump, I bet that would have worked. Oh, scurry. Scurry. Okay, you can you can climb quite a distance on a full diamond of stamina. Even further, if you don't start your climb by sliding downward. What is that? What is this? Are you friendly? It doesn't look like it has a mouth, so I guess I'm not afraid it's going to bite me. Okay, I have received the chum egg. Offered up by chums when planting themselves into the ground. Perfectly smooth and hard as a rock, these eggs seem to float with how light they are. There must be a good place to deliver these. It's weird that it snapped the camera perfectly behind me like that so that I could not see what was happening. It was maybe not totally ideal. Huh. Oh. Oh. Okay. 
Well, that seems like a problem. Also, I th this is interesting. I think the fact that all the colors leached out of everything is how the game is portraying nighttime. Like, th this is darkness. It doesn't actually reduce direct visibility, but it makes everything... This is a really interesting way to do that, if that is indeed what is happening. Okay, well, there's a humming sound coming from in here. Stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Um, I'm afraid. Nope, I seem to have lost my ability to. Okay, I can use the keyboard. Weird. Am I afraid? Yes and no. I'm ready for Rohana to know me. I am ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in this sacred place. I know I am in her sight. Okay, well that makes me very much want to go down in there and see what is below this platform. Because it sure looked like it left a big gap in the floor. Okay. Back to town, then. That seems mighty useful. Uh, can we get back down into the chamber below this easily? Alright, we're gonna have to go outside to do that, it looks like. Right, they, want me, they want me to do it by actually executing this properly. So it looks to me like if I f fall off of here, it's not going to be totally trivial to get back up. But I really do want to. All right, let's let's go see. It sure looked like it left explorable space. Nope, never mind. Apparently, it'll go back down if I go back down. Hmm, I should be able to climb this. Yeah, okay, if you hit a wall in glide mode, it's actually fairly efficient. That is a small treasure chest. Uh, sick, 20 diamonds. 
20 very oddly shaped Cheerios. They don't make them like this anymore on account of all the lawsuits. I wonder if there's a maximum distance that the glide will hold over. Okay, maybe the leaching of color was just an effect of that particular ruin. Okay, it looks like maybe the bubble just holds until you hit something. That seems very powerful. Yep, and you can disengage and re-engage at will. That's that's very cool. That's a little inconvenient. I, pro I probably could have tipped the camera out of the plume, I suppose. Really thought I was just going to be able to get on top of that little bit there. What is your deal? A post box. Hello, Sable. Unread messages, zero. Have a good day. Okay. Interesting stuff. Uh, all right, I guess you want to talk. Jetty greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. So, hey, that's a big glider to you. I tell Jotty I'm actually a big glider. She laughs. That makes sense. It was very funny. <laughs> You're right. You are. Sable, noted adult and big glider. I'll keep it in mind. There we go. See, you just gotta get a little respect around here. Hold on. She had more things she wanted to say. She did not remember. It's so strange getting called that, especially since I just told you not to. I tell Jotty how strange it is being called Glider instead of Sable or even Clan Child. I'm just trying to get you used to it. She seems to really like it. Maybe I like it too. My little Glider. No respect. When I return to Halal, it's clear they know what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf, in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Um, I think I think it looks like a hug, personally. I tell Halal that I feel almost embraced by the perpetual, warm and safe in my own little bubble. They swoon. Oh, that's such a nice way of describing it. Halal's mood doesn't darken but the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling. Just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there heaving myself into chasms. Well, you know, I'll heave myself into chasms for you. I tell Halal I'll throw myself into a thousand chasms on their behalf, and they giggle. That's what I like to hear. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Halal laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it. And I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding would, wouldn't mean much if it were all gains and no loss, hmm. I think about that, but decide there's already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I'm saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, and my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. 
Oh, you're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. And my advice? Just try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all of that out there, but the world's an easier place if you put joy first. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help, and tell them I'll miss them. That'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance all in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Hilal gestures toward the tower. It seems Cizo wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Okay. I can I can I can climb a big tower. That seems like no problem. So I'm assuming we're not gonna be getting a new bike. We're just gonna have to use this one for the moment. Hello there. Who are you? All right, we'll, we'll talk to you after. What is your deal? Cizo is an outclanner to the Abexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code, must go to where they are needed. But Cizo has been among us so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment, first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she's one of us. I think there is a perception among the other clans that the Ibexi are quite insular, or that our designation of Ibexi versus outclanners suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But, in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Uh, the bike, yeah, it's definitely, definitely the bike. <laughs> a bit worried. Am I really getting in a bike? Cizo has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. <laughs> yes, Jotty told me how excited you were. Cizo sniffs. She also told me Drifts would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud, uh, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat, which is a totally believable lie. I don't, begr I don't begrudge Driss's forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hoverbike parts yourself. Oh. That actually sounds like a fun adventure? I tell Cizo I like the sound of that. A little adventure before my big one. It's more meaningful than you know. To bond with one's bike before it has taken form is more privilege than labor. Here, take this. Cizo hands me something. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. I ask Cizo where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships, in fragments spread apart. A good start would be the ship down there near the camp. You'll find another up on that great rock near the other side of the canyon. And another behind the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Okay, this seems, this seems pretty doable. Uh, do most gliders make their own bikes? Only the lucky ones. I tell Cizo I'll see her soon and head off in search of the components. Together, we will create something new out of the old. Okay, well that seems very responsible of us. It will not let me move until I play with the navigator. I'll press N to use the navigator to mark interesting landmarks to appear on your compass. You can add or remove markers from the last screen. Try placing a thing on the thing. Okay. I will, in fact, place a thing on the thing. Boy, the uh, sensitivity on this is also very low. 
can't tell. Is that? Yeah, it's it's weird how it draws the line all the way from me to where the thing is. It kind of makes it hard to tell what it's sticking up above. Also, hey, look at that. It's another one of those things. Okay, we're going to go give that one a hug. But you first. Ooh, I think, yeah, yeah, we should be fine. Hello, small child. The balloon was more fun than the person in it. Uh, was that, a, was that a crack at me? Are you talking about my balloon? I approached the cartographer. I love this mask. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? I, did I? Uh, sorry, longingly? I clarified that I was looking curiously, and that balloons aren't exactly my ideal vessel. The newcomer shrugs. Fair enough. I suppose when you can ensconce yourself in a peaceful little bubble and float down from the sky, the balloon loses some of its charm. But I'll accept your curiosity. I give the balloon an approving nod so that he doesn't feel too bad. Well, good to meet you. And, oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. Suppose if you've come all this way to see me, it's probably a map you're after, eh, Sable? Uh, you know, it wouldn't hurt. I would love a map. Of course you would. That'll be 50 cuts. Ah. To my ears, it's a fair price for a map, but too expensive for a pre-gliding glider with empty pockets. I tell Jordan I'll be back. I'm not asking Jotty for money. We will discover our own money. Am I allowed to enter your... Yep, there we go. No, I am not allowed to just enter your domicile. Well, let's go say howdy to that critter before I forget that they're there. Actually, you're a, you're a new person, though. Hold on a second. We talk to new people. You also have a cool mask. I mean, my mask is fine, I guess. My mask has got sort of like a slug-like suggestion to it. That's That's all right. As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Uh, so I ask her, hey, uh, what are you looking at? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Ilaria over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Ilaria. <laughs> do, you, do you want me to get her back? Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine, and I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. Yeah, fat chance. All right. Gotta go talk to the critter. Which little bluff thing were you on? Ah, maybe I should have marked the... I was like, I'll definitely be able to see it. It was by the ship. Ah, aha, aha. This is not optimal. All right, can we get up on the house maybe? I need a place where the roof doesn't overhang. Okay. What a weird biological egg cup. Huh. Alright. Since we've set a marker on the ship, we are sure not to forget it. So let's go do the other ones first. Hold on a second, there's wildlife to bother. Also, buckets. Okay, so we throw it in the direction we're facing, not the direction the camera's looking. 
Fair enough. Also, we should talk to this person, I suppose. Their mask seems to be largely bucket-based. Umar is a man of few words, and he's nothing if not consistent. Okay, like really few words. Okay, I see. Oh, hey, this is, I mean, this is probably somebody's money, but whatever, fine. Can I hang out with the critters? The critters have nothing to say to me. Like, extremely nothing to say to me. Wow. All right, I see how it is. I was coming over here offering, like, pets and attention. Turning your butt towards me. Hmm. Hold on a second. I want to ride the bike through this. I'm actually kind of curious because the other thing that we. Ooh, am I going to be able to do that? Probably not, huh? Oh, but because the other ring that we rode through lit up, I'm wondering if maybe there's a few of them around here, and if I light them all up, then. Oh, geez. Okay. All right, okay. Well, never mind, that's not gonna work. All right. We'll check out all this stuff in a minute. Let's let's start by going through the dam. I wonder how long ago there needed to be a dam here. Okay, can't interact with or push the box in any way. Okay, that's fairly tall. Well, this looks mighty important. That shook everything we could see. Um, it is possible that I should be more careful with these things. I don't directly see a way up there. I completely failed to jump. Oh, you know what? This... I thought that this was... Um, this bit here was hanging over. Well, we can just climb this. That's no big deal. This looks like it's going to need to be powered in some way. Oh, I don't know, by this thing, perhaps. It's been pretty solid good luck for me that that was just sitting there and still had power. You would think that a thing like this... Okay, that seems good. You would think that a thing like this would have been thoroughly stripped for parts, especially as close to our, our uh, settlement. Potentially temporary settlement, uh, as it is. Well, whatever. If they're content to let me be the one who takes the parts, I'm not going to complain. Anything cool over here? I mean, aside from spaceship stuff, which is obviously inherently cool, but very hard to climb on. Hmm. 
I'm sort of curious if there's anything of value out here. That seems significant up there, maybe. Hold on. Okay. Hard to say. Might be nothing. And I see that over there is definitely... I don't know what exactly, but certainly something. Oof. All right, she's not always, it's not always easy to get her to catch stuff while she's like falling past it, it seems like. This game has such weird little animations. I am way into it. That is for sure relevant. So it's like a shrine, which is to say maybe I shouldn't have taken that money. Can I put it back? Well, all right. Don't necessarily feel great about that one. There's a long way to, out of our way to go for 40% of the price of a map. I hope that when we get better bikes, we'll have the ability to install like a, a call button in them or like a whistle maybe. Maybe I'll just get used to uh, driving the bike much deeper into the heart of whatever we're doing. Although here, I guess I didn't really have much of a choice. All right, one of three. Psh. Obviously intentional tricks, just super cool looking. I really wanted to get in there and impress everybody. All right, let's see if we can... <clears throat> find this second part, and then we'll go back, go back to the, the ship we marked for the third bit. It was over here, right? Yeah, there we go. good news is I think with this one we're going to be able to just jump off when we're done and get back to the bike that way. We could definitely go around to the right, but let's see what happens if we just climb over this wall. Okay, this, this seems like it was productive. Uh, 
Ugh. I'm really good at hitting the jump button just a just an instant too late. Yep. Not a valuable skill, it turns out. Okay, let's give that another go. Better early than late. Did I startle a bunch more birds? I didn't even notice them that time. defense. They seem to be very skittish around here. This is still, okay. This is still live? This seems very dangerous. Also, it doesn't feel super safe for me to be, um, for me to be handling this power supply at all, but especially while, you know, with my bare hands. I tried really hard there just to fall onto the motorcycle. I thought that would be pretty cool. We'll get it next time. Huh. It still has find a... Okay, alright, okay, bike. Still has to find a power supply listed on the thing. We definitely found that power supply, right? Well, I guess we'll know when I try to turn this in and it doesn't work. Before we go where we're going, though, this is, like, very conspicuous. I sure hope it's going to turn out that these uh, chum eggs are actually useful or valuable. Yep, it does in fact look like that was probably the only thing over here. This thing is extremely squirrely. I can't believe what's his name was going to send us out with that thing. There's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I do notice a, bl a blinking light flashing on the da dashboard of the cockpit. 
I mean, okay. Let's push it. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording, and it's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Ramen. Concentrate. I didn't think I'd have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. I don't think I have to remind you. We're almost there. All right, let's see if what that old mach machinist told us holds up. If not, there'll be hell to pay. I hear the sound of me mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks. Buttons being pressed, perhaps. Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, Ramen. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, on Rohana's math, not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly, the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. And then the sounds of someone cheering. It worked! We're flying! More cheering. And is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, 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 let's focus. This thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Well, let me check the machinist's notes. A long pause, the rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen? Oh, that lever, Toma. The one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to... And the recording cuts off there. Well. Okay, not great. Okay, let's leave it alone this time. We, we know it. We know what happens. Uh huh? Are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice... <laughs> you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never. Never. She never fails to get to me. <laughs> Let's not jump straight to your horrible child. Saima, may I please have it? I decide to be gentle and ask her, may I please have it? <laughs> may I please have it? She mimics me terribly, all high and screechy. Despite my best efforts, I seethe. Oh well, too bad. Maybe you'll find it on your own. But I don't think so. Saima laughs off, uh, laughs off my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. But then I simply stifle a sigh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. I mean, listen... I don't necessarily think it's morally wrong to push her over and just take the thing. It's probably dangerous for her to have it, right? I'm just I'm just looking out for Saima, really. All right, who knows where I might find some damn beetles? It's the middle of the night and I'm going beetle hunting on a bike that's as likely to kill me as get me where I'm going. Okay, yep, that's exactly what I intended. Alright, somebody help. Beetles. I need beetles. I could ask about catching be uh, beetles for that awful little Saima. Yeah, I probably should. Hey, do you know about Saima's hiding place? I know she spends a lot of time in the cave under the camp. You could have a look down there. I tell Jotty the cartographer wants 50 cuts for a map of the Ewer. 
I try to hedge the way I speak about this, as I'm not entirely sure whether that's too much, not enough, or precisely its value. She tells me not to worry. Here's some money to get you- wow, okay. Use it mostly wisely, and then a little unwisely, when the mood strikes. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. Can you imagine? I thank Jotty effusively and head out on my way. Hold on. I should ask about the beetles, too, while I'm here. There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up to one and catch it, though. There's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetle will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. Okay. Let's, uh... Nope, I'm not allowed to just back out of this conversation. All right, we'll just go through this. Uh... Yeah, as long as we're here, I suppose we may as well get the map taken care of. So are we going to actually catch beetles? I, I suppose I did make an agreement. It's not the agreement that I would have made had I been fully in control. But it is an agreement. Uh, I probably don't need to... Here, I just... Really, I just came up here for this. <laughs> Greetings, child. Ah, perfect. Let's trade then. A map of viewer sold... Yeah. We can certainly afford it now. I thank Jordan for the Ewer map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more... real. Well, good luck on your gliding, Sable. I still remember mine. I ask how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me. But I spent a little extra time out there, just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there and they'll have more maps to sell you, from Hakoa to the Sodic Waste. Thank Jordan for the tip and say goodbye. Okay. Cave under the city. So somewhere down here there should be like a hidden entrance. I mean, we could just go get the beetles. But also... Am I... Is this who I am? Am I giving in to demands? Damn it. Okay. Harder to steer than it looks like. How is it that Simon manages to contain so much chaos and verve in such a small, uh, so small a form? Even now, there is something troublesome being dreamed up behind that mask. I know it. Yeah, she looks like a problem. You can tell. What is this? Huh. The dye bottle for the colors of the Abexi red bike. Okay, well I'm glad I came down here. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Ver version of quest completed, Beetle Detour. I certainly did something. Saima can go catch her own beetles. I don't, do I even want to talk to her about it? I don't think I do. I think let's just be gone before she makes a big show of me being mean to her and turns the villagers against us. Okay, very difficult to still... Okay. Apologies to anyone who gets motion sick. Let's go have a chat with the with the machinist and get this bike thing resolved. Uh, 
I return to Caesar with the parts, and it's, a, it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yeah, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? Yes, I am ready. Then let us head to the workshop. Caesar relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Caesar is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the components you acquired, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod and feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Okay. Um... Just plug this directly into my own face. What do I put it in? Ah, okay, I see. This is this is the chassis right here. Okay, and we'll just install that in the booster somehow. You know, just rub them together till one of them dis disappears. Everything's very plug-and-play these days. Huh. Interesting, that didn't have the interaction cursor on it, but it did still need to be interacted with. Okay, I mean, this looks a lot cooler than the last one already. Listen. Cizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to... Simoon. All at once, I know the hoverbike's name. Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Cizo know. Simoon. Simoon. Well done, Sable. What does it mean? What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Cizo looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing, even when I lean close. I tell Simon that I am eager to know her better, and Cizo looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. Is that good if they do? Okay. An odd blessing, perhaps? But Cizo is prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simoon, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth and they'll give you more badges. I thank Cizo twice, for good measure, and give a bow. I am ready. I should speak to Jadi about the final gliding ceremony. Can I paint my bike? I did. I found that red dye, and I would like to apply it to... Simon feels... It just feels red, is the thing. Caesar looks busy. I shall leave her to it. Okay, so that, the ellipsis over their head, does not always mean I have something to say to you. Alright, where am I? Okay, I see. We're still not going to talk to Saima. She, she doesn't need to know. I return to Jadi with a new lightness. And it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. 
Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Yeah, Caesar gave it to me. Then you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the Mask Caster in no time. I try to think about going to a Mask Caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll get plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. But don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. Oh, that's a really interesting system. And how will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out. But when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there is only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rohana. There you'll assemble your gliding mask. And go. There are things I wish to convey, convey to Jadi here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. And though I find myself unable to speak any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made you these. They are dyed with the traditional Ibexi maroon, and I hope provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Ibexi. You will simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I will always know you. I will always love you. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. And I am ready. Okay, well, I do feel like we should head to the temple and begin our gliding, but I think maybe that feels like a next time kind of thing. Uh, the intention here with this series is uh, for there to be an hour of gameplay, hour or so of gameplay every weekday until we have seen Sable through this journey. Uh, so come back next time tomorrow for the proper beginning and we'll see you then.